Okay, fuck you, die! I bet you're wondering how I ended up here. Welcome back to season two of Will It Beer. This season we are trying to give our brewers extra challenging ingredients and hopefully give you some ideas that uh, might get a little bit crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce those brewers and find out what their mystery ingredients are. My name is Damon Nets. I am the owner of No Drop Brewing Co. My name is Hayden Ingram, uh, head brewer at my house. Uh, looking forward to Wib today. Jameson whiskey, cask mates, some gin, some rosemary, whole black pepper, lots of it, potatoes, and some nice huge lemons. I'm getting a an Irish feel. I'm probably thinking a darker ale. I'm kind of thinking I'm probably gonna be going gin, rosemary, pepper, lemon. Are you ready for the challenge ingredient? This is a yeah. Okay, I can see with the label here. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna have a snack yeah. while we're brewing. Exactly. Yeah. The Christmas tree. Oh, gee. Oh, what? Is this dead? Oh, Jesus! What the hell? Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm not using this. Oh, what is there, lobster? <laughs> and I gotta touch this shit. Is it alive? Yeah, those are alive. Ah, we just moved. You guys are assholes. I don't want to even touch these fuckers. I hate fish. I hate fish. I'm thinking like a lighter, still like a wheat beer. A fishy wheat? That just sounds terrible. Fishing anything. So we're looking at a high protein malt bill. Uh, we're gonna use uh, mostly Heidel, uh, some Munich, some Torfi wheat, and then some white wheat. Uh, and then we're gonna do a shorter mash. Uh, 30 45 minutes uh, to get a higher dextrin content. So, uh, we'd use a base of pearl malt. Uh, I'm going for a stout base here, and so we topped it off with some uh, oat malt, keep it a little husky for the vertical system, and then uh, pale chocolate, uh, Crawford Special 3, and uh, roasted barley. So Damon decided to go with a Saison, which for a lighter end of the beer spectrum, I think is a really good idea. The funkiness of the Saison can really help mask some of those lobster flavors and uh, really work into that farmhouse kind of feel. It's also going to be a really good carrier of a lot of the other ingredients. I'm thinking the rosemary, the lemon, things like that, to have a natural peppery note. Uh, and it's gonna be a really good base to carry a lot of those flavors for not being a dark beer that can mask a bunch of things. Hayden decided to go with more of an oyster stout kind of style, which I think is the first thing I would have thought of if I had shellfish as an ingredient. Uh, the challenge for him is going to be incorporating some of those brighter, vibrant flavors with such a dark base that can mask a lot of those flavors. Okay, we're about to mash in. Uh, we're gonna shoot for probably 150. Uh, it's at 155 right now. When it comes to the potatoes, Hayden's strategy of pre-boiling or pre-gelatinizing those potatoes to make sure that the starches end up in the beer, I think is really good. And it's also gonna give kind of a rustic feel to everything. It might add a little bit of extra dextrinous content from the starches in those potatoes as well. So it's gonna be fun to see if that earthiness really shows through in the final product. Both brewers opted to do a tincture, uh, basically soaking some of their ingredients in alcohol to make sure that they can control the flavor that's in the final beer. I think that's the best strategy possible. And it's an easy way to get the alcohol ingredients in. They both went with whiskey, which is going to be kind of a no-brainer in the darker beers, but it's going to be a really fun flavor to see in the Saison. So I'm going to do the Jameson. After trying this, it's, I think, going to go better more of the stout base than the gin. Um, so I'm going to get a tincture going with the rosemary in this little jar here. I'm going to do lemon in here. Probably go two shots of vodka. And I'm going to do full sprigs. And then for the lemons, um, probably zest them. Just a smidge again. I'll take the lobster eyes out and replace it with peppers. <laughs> so we're gonna make a little concoction. Uh, we're gonna use a full uh, lemon. We're gonna use a full container. Oh, add it in the very end of fermentation, see what happens. Damon actually threw his lemons, rosemary, and black pepper all into uh, his tincture, which I think is the best way to get the aromatics out of all of those. He is doing a lighter beer though, so we'll see how the whiskey ends up playing up in the final product. So we did a really short mash, shorter than what I had thought originally. Uh, we did about 30 minutes. Uh, and so now we're gonna take it up and spart it. Oh Holy Let me know if you need something strong to get that for you. You got it. I don't think I can lift this above my head. Dude, you got it. Oh, you have to hold it like this. No. Oh, it's crooked. Oh. 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 
He doesn't have any malt in his. This is just, just potatoes. Do that he after. literally has just potatoes. Show that no, I'm no, like, no. His I'm malt bad. bill is right so there on the ground. Okay. <laughs> so mash in. We're gonna put all the grains in first. So I got half the grains in. We'll get the taters in here. Got a limited risk of splash here. Got some nice uh, first salt addition here. A little aquarium. Lobster water. Oh, I have a shellfish allergy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first lobster edition. Um, we have one lobster here who's been uh, pre-killed. So it is a perfect mash edition here. I think it's gonna help with the, um, when I'm recircing, it'll help to kind of spread the water over the top of the mash. So we're just gonna kind of have them partially in, and then he'll serve as a, uh, a spreader here. <laughs> oh, hell no. Dude, I gotta take the fucking rubber band off. I literally don't wanna, is he gonna fucking pinch me and attack me? Probably. Dude, I just don't wanna do this. Okay, fuck you, die. <laughs> oh, now the other ones are moving, I'm sorry. I love animals. They're all alive. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, he's got one arm. Oh, I'm doing you a service. <laughs> all right, we're good. Fuck off. I got some fucking hops. I love animals. So I think it's been about 10-ish minutes, so we're going to take the lobster out. Look at that juicy red. Oh, there's a guy with one arm. Poor guy. And then this guy. Ah! Oh, that's hot. About 10, 12 minutes left on the boil. All right, so we got a nice slow cooked lobster here. All right, so sparge is done. Uh, I'm gonna take the grain, set it over here. We're gonna set our, our temp up um, to boil here. All right, so the boil just finished. Took it to the back to start chilling it. Um, I made a little uh, whirlpool sack full of uh, some lemon zest and the rosemary. I use about two lemons and half a pack of the rosemary. So I got that sitting in the whirlpool right now. It's gonna chill out, cool down. So for the yeast, when we pitch it, it's gonna be the Lithuania farmhouse style from Omega. And then at the very end of the fermentation, we're gonna drop this bad boy in, uh, maybe a quarter to a third of it. That one's waving at you. He's saying <laughs> hi. Hello. Number one. Oh, we're gonna have to watch our The other one. <laughs> All right, so that's the total of six now. Mm -hmm. One in mash, five in the boil. Boils obviously got killed by the cold lobsters. Probably gonna cook these and see where the lobster flavor's at. And we'll decide if we wanna add two more. All right, we just hit the 11 minute mark and I make sure uh, we get lunch here for everyone. Yeah, one. And we got lunch. All right, so we're at about six and a half gallons. Um, so I'm gonna throw in about two ounces here of Chinook, shooting for um, 40, 50 IBUs. So this will bring our total up to seven. Bye, Fred. All right, so uh, I'm gonna continue to try to bump up the briny lobster flavor, so some more lobster water here. And then I'm gonna just be taking the claws here of our buddy lobsters and essentially just getting their nice, yummy juices out. So if you kind of release the top part there. Oh yeah, a little bit of meat just plopped in there. And then we got about four minutes left on the lobster that's currently cooking, so two lobsters in there. 
we just went with one sprig. Was thinking two sprigs of rosemary for flame out addition. I have the uh, tincture I got going right now, so if the rosemary is a little light, I'll add a little extra rosemary on the back end. The yeast is going with darkness for this one. Um, just want this kind of nice uh, Englishy strain going on for the the stout base. So that'll be it for today. Uh, we'll come back in about a week, um, so we'll all see each other next Tuesday for uh, doing our tincture additions. All right, so it's been about a week, a uh, little over a week. Uh, we're gonna add the tincture. Um, did a little taste testing on one milliliter, two milliliter, some sample glasses. So uh, I decided I'm gonna add about two ounces of this right now. Uh, and then once we keg it, probably another one to two ounces. And we should be good to go. So we came back after a week, uh, tasted the lobster beer, and um, that's when we started to do our lemon and rosemary additions. So we ended up adding an ounce of uncrushed peppercorns into the, the carboy. Uh, after we added the peppercorns, came back after a few days, the um, protein eness of the beer was um, a little off-putting on the mouth, so we ended up doing some super clear and letting it drop out, uh, cold crashing after that. Uh, and then at kegging, um, added a little bit more rosemary, a little bit more lemon, just to kind of push those flavors forward a little bit more. So we have the beer crash kegged and all ready to drink. Um, we have the beer from each of the brewers in front of us, and we're going to be judging this on two different styles. The first is going to be how well the ingredients are used, uh, i.e. how well the beers remind us of lobster dinner. And the second is gonna be overall flavor, regardless of the ingredients used. So which beer we would drink best in a bar? Yeah, I don't know which one's which, but I feel like I'm gonna go probably the lighter one first. Start with the lighter beer, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. A big flavor right off the bat is gonna be uh, rosemary. I get a lot of rosemary. That is so much rosemary. I like it though. I think the lobster flavor is very late. But the brininess and the lobstery kind of quality, they're there, they play. Yeah, I think the it's definitely got some salt to it. But yeah, the kind of like herbal rosemary flavor. A uh, little lemon, I think, too. I don't taste the whiskey as much anymore. Almost the semi-harshness of whiskey. Now, in terms of the Saison flavor, there's not a ton. It's not overly pungent, but it's definitely there. And I think kind of the pungence of the Saison, uh, it blends well with lobster. If I order this at a bar, I would not touch myself. So then, on to the dark one. If you're wondering why my glass looks different, my rim got buttered. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of lobster, but I still get those subtle hints of rosemary and lemon that kind of balances out a little bit, so I'm not just breathing out fish breath. Ton of lobster, very salty brine flavor for sure. So I think once this is nitroed out a little bit, it'll kind of help smooth it a little bit more. Um, it's definitely got a lot of lobster, I think, to it. I mean, there is a little bit of nitro in there because we did get it somewhat carbonated before mm -hmm. the tank exploded itself. That was my bad. My fault. Um, but when it comes to the flavor, I do think the little bit of nitro kind of helps smooth smooths it out and it does have a little bit of that kind of like rolling or uh, rolling texture. And it's definitely a lot better compared to pre-tincture and pre-adding the super clear when it was super proteiny. It goes down a lot better now and I don't get that really weird mouth feel. I don't really taste much of the whiskey. I don't oh, get that yeah. bite either like no. I did in the in the lighter beer. So this is definitely the lobsteriest beer, uh, but not quite as herbal. This one definitely has a little bit of the lobster. You can't taste it a ton, but the uh, um, the rosemary comes through a ton. For me, I get more lobster dinner from the stout. I get a lot more of the lobster, the rosemary and the lemon sit really well and I can feel the black pepper a little bit. I kind of take this two ways. Well, what I want to have with a lobster dinner and what tastes like a lobster dinner. So if the question's more what tastes like a lobster dinner, uh, I'm definitely going to go with the stout more. I, I mean, I, I can really taste the brine and the lobster in this one. So what tastes like a lobster dinner, I'm going to say this one. I'd probably go for the Saison first if it was in a bar. It's just easier for me to drink. It's more my style. My flavor profile is definitely the lighter beers. And so I would drink a lot more of this than uh, the stout. And now we're going to rate them based on who used more lobsters. There's two categories. Danny used more one arm lobsters. <laughs> Damn right. That's true. I, I use more dead lobsters. <laughs> Here's a chart that tallies all the votes that we had for this Willet beer in terms of the judges. It seemed like most people did enjoy Damon's expression of the rosemary, the black pepper, and the lemon. But when it came to which one represented a lobster dinner more, most of us voted for uh, Hayden's oyster style stout. When it comes to which one we would drink in a bar more, most people did vote for Damon's uh, Saison. But a couple of us did vote for the oyster style sat, which was kind of the swing vote, leading Hayden to be the winner, which means we will see him in a future episode of Will It Beer. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoy this, please spread the word, share this to your friends, family, loved ones, and remember, they're not really loved ones if they don't watch it through at least twice and share it with a friend. 
We'll also be linking a PayPal link in the description below if you want to support future episodes of this. Will It Beer is a very special project to us, but it's also a very expensive and time consuming project for us. And so if you want to see these videos get better and bigger, please consider supporting us in, the, in, in, uh, in, that, in that regard. Ryan's gonna finish the close out, ready to go. Uh, like the video, comment, um, go watch the po or listen to the podcast on all streaming sites uh, every Sunday at 8.45 Pacific Standard Time Perfect. in the morning. I love animals!